I don't know, I'm kind of scared. I am honestly kind of scared to go look at it. I'm always game for a good project, a good fixer-upper, but uh, I don't know how bad it is. And uh, with all the fees and everything, it came out to be 5300 So I'm not sure, you know, how good a deal it is yet. Now I know you think it's gonna be crazy, but I really think $1,000 can do it. So I think we pretty much decided that I'm not sure what this sheet metal is going to cost. Maybe another 75. It's 75 dollars for the half a sheet, which really isn't too bad. This is the magnetic stainless, so it's not the high end stuff that the entire trailer is actually made out of. So we're going to rip this off. Regretfully, it means another couple days of work, but. It's going to be well worth replacing this one last sheet, riveting it on. It will actually look fully completed at that point. It takes about three hits. So if you ever have to pull rivets out, it's a good idea to get a grinder. After you bunch the rivets, you go through, grind off the end of it, and then you punch them out with a hammer and a punch. So we had a decision to make. We had two choices for the holes. We can either try to line up the holes right here with our sheet metal, or we could just go ahead and drill new holes. The downside of trying to line up the holes is that if you're just a hair off, the rivet will not go in and you end up with a really wonky hole that's too large. To err on the side of caution, we decided just to go ahead and drill new holes. Um, the top part, it's not a big deal. It has a different number of holes than the bottom part. So we'll just go ahead and use all of those since the sheet metal will slide under it. But then on the whole bottom rail, we just have to drill all the holes. Unfortunately, the battery went dead before you guys could really see the fireworks go down on the horse trailer. <laughs> and Eric was happy about that because it was starting to get a little ugly. 
Um, and I was thinking we might have to have the neighbors across the street help us shove this up in there because it's a large floppity piece of metal and two people just weren't making it happen. We needed probably a couple more to keep it in place. But the good news is, hey, there it is. It's on and hopefully straight. <laughs> Yeah, so this is one of those things that uh, could end well or could end really bad. Eric is out hunting right now, which is kind of a strange thing for me to be out here on a Sunday night doing this myself, but uh, fingers crossed <laughs> that it's going to go on okay. Eric was getting tired of how long it took me to drill a hole, so we got him to go over. I feel kind of like the kid of the science project whose dad takes over the science project and the kid doesn't get to touch it at all. Can I work on the trailer now? No. Hi, puppy. You want some food? Here you go. Sorry. Now can I? So this is 3M panel bond adhesive. We use this at work for box sides. Um, what is a box side? Of trucks, it's very, very strong. And we use it on the patch on the roof with along with the rivets. Absolutely, you don't even need to rivet with this stuff. Done. So you gotta fill it with more sealer. Mm -hmm. This whole thing, like it's like this whole thing's wide. Yeah. Anywhere there's a joint you want to seal, and then around right. here too, over top of it.
two. self-leveling cock. The lady at the RV shop sold this to us, said that this was the stuff to use. So um, I went through with degreaser and rubbed all the seams down. So hopefully this will work. All right, I got some cock stuff on my hands. It's in my hair now because I accidentally touched my head. We got this whole thing done just barely. Some areas had a little bit too much, and some areas just barely have enough. Four bottles worth. So now it's got to dry for an unknown length of time. You guys ready for the grand reveal on the outside of the trailer? Here it is. <laughs> 